Hi, this is Jim with Technosonic. Thank you for joining us for Radio 101, and this is our first episode, First Things First. In this First Things First episode, we're going to take the first precautionary step we should have with any radio, and that is to download a baseline code plug. Baseline code plug can be out of a new radio, or it could be out of an existing radio that you have in your fleet or your aircraft. The idea is we want a native code plug, one that we know is good and solid and works for us. Do we ever need to troubleshoot or do some restorative work on a radio down the road? So it's an ounce of precaution, but it'll help save us as we continue down the road of learning how to manipulate the radio and the code plug. So let's get started. First thing we're going to want to do is open our Motorola CPS. And our CPS comes open, it looks like this. The basic configuration, we're going to need to read the radio with. Okay. In this case, my Motorola software, I believe if I hit the help about CPS, I can see that I'm at version 23 software. Okay. The version of Motorola software is important because the Motorola software has to match or be greater than what is on your radio that you're reading and writing to. If I have version 23 Motorola software, I can talk to any radio. If I have version 20, and this is at version 21, we will not have a conversation. We'll see a, a version mismatch. And that means we'll have to update our software. So you may want to take a moment and make sure that your software that you're running when you're starting to work on radios is the most current. That'll save you down the road. Okay, so how do we go about reading and writing to a radio? First thing we'll need to do is plug in a open both programs, oh, turn your radio on, open CPS, then I want to plug in my radio programming cord. Once it's plugged into the radio, plug it in to the laptop or computer that you're going to use. When that happens, we're going to hear the USB affiliation sound. So if we wait a moment, we'll hear the sound. There we go, and we know now that the radio has affiliated with the computer. That will disconnect and connect each time we change modules in the radio. So we want to start with module one. We're going to highlight module one. That'll be the radio that we're going to read. And it's a simple process of just saying, read radio. What you're going to see is this box open. It's going to try to affiliate. It'll take a minute, folks. Be a little bit patient with it. The radio will go to programming mode, and we'll see read radio verification. So we're going to let this process run out. Okay, we've connected. Just heard the USB disconnect, and I now have the code plug for this radio. Each module has its own serial number. It has its own code plug that it recognizes. Okay. What we have is we have this program set up here now. And all we're going to do is go ahead and save it off. I'm going to actually save this code plug twice. The first time, I am going to save it as a baseline. So this is my 9300 baseline. Module number one, and it's 321. I'm going to go ahead and save that. That's my baseline. I'm never going to touch that code plug again unless I have a problem with the radio. I am going to, while I'm here, save as. I'm going to put it in my working directory of code plugs. I'm going to save it here and I'm going to actually call this, just make it simple, we'll call it working. And I'll go ahead and save that. Okay, so now I have it working. I can start editing my working version. I can make changes to it and I can use that as my radio programming. But if I ever have a problem, a code, pl code plug corrupts or some kind of issue comes up down the road, I have a fallback position. I can go back to a working known good code plug and restore it. That'll often tell us if it's a code plug problem, a 
software problem or if we actually do have a hardware problem that's going to require removing the radio. Okay, once that's done, we can go ahead and just close the code plug, leaving CPS open, and I can select my next radio. We're going to listen for the USB to affiliate. Read the rate second radio. I don't need to reboot the radio each time. I can just simply move down each module, read it, and save it. Again, we see the programming mode. Radio is being wide. And we're just going to repeat the process. Becomes a pretty quick process once you've done this a couple times. If you have a fleet, you may not want to name it. You may want to utilize the radio serial number located on the right side panel of the radio itself. I'm going to call this module two. Save button. And save as baseline mod two. And one more time. And just do the third module here. Let it affiliate. A word of caution. You want to make sure you have a stable setup when you're doing this process anytime you're reading and writing to a radio. Make sure the radio has stable power or the aircraft's on a power cart. Make sure your cord is not somewhere where someone's going to trip or use a laptop or set something where they can knock the cord connection off of the laptop or the radio. Each time we read and write to a radio, we're opening software in the Motorola module. If we lose that communication, the module, the software could be left open and it leaves the radio in a confused state. It doesn't know what to do, uh, which is, which gives us two options. If we do brick a radio, our first fallback is this baseline code plug we're making right now. Try to write the baseline code plug back into the radio. If that doesn't work, the radio may end up having to come back to Technosonic. We remove the module. It's going to have to be basically redone via Motorola. And we want to avoid that at all costs. So a couple moments of caution to make sure we're, our setup is solid is very worthwhile. All right, last option here. Go ahead and read radio three. You repeat the programming mode. We finish our process. Module three. that's done. The radio stays in programming mode until we reboot it, so we can go ahead and do that. Turn the power off. Go ahead. Close up my Motorola CPS. Like we're powering up correctly. Close this down. And we can end the first episode. So there's a quick, easy 10 minutes that can get us out of a lot of trouble down the road. I hope this was useful to you. In our next episode, we're going to take a look at those first working code plugs that we're going to go ahead and make a couple of changes to.
scope plugs I'm pulling out of this radio are, are, are the test scope plugs that you get as a default from, from Technosonic. Uh, there's some features in there that are very useful for testing, may not be so beneficial for the operator. So we're gonna take a look at a few of those settings and we're gonna go ahead and make a couple of changes. I hope to see you on episode two. Thanks for joining us for Radio One and have a great day.